Hi, James. Hello. What I want to start with is, do you remember the first album you ever bought? Um, well, technically, I didn't have my own album for a long time because um, we didn't have a lot of money. And I, I just borrowed my mum and dad's albums. But my mum, I think my mum, I didn't buy it, but I think my mum bought it for, for me. But the first album I remember having was Bad. Okay. Uh, and I loved that album. I, I was obsessed with it. And then obviously I found Thriller after that. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, Michael Jackson was, was the main person I listened to between the ages of three and 10. I loved Michael Jackson. Why? What was it about him that made you? Um, I, just, I just liked his voice. His voice was so powerful. He's just gritty and he, he kind of, he was singing about, like, I never really knew what he was singing about as a kid, sure. but it just, it didn't matter really. I just liked the sound of his music and it always sounded like, just made you want to dance instantly. And um, yeah, I don't know. There's always been something in Michael Jackson's voice that I reacted to, you know, whether it's early Michael Jackson or Bad or Thriller or dangerous. I just loved all of it. I just, I, I just love the whole. I love, I love the way he uses the snare. His snare's always like, it's just wicked. Sure. I love, I love. Yeah, Michael Jackson was my first love, really. And if we take that first album, Bad, were there particular songs that you liked? Or oh, yeah, what? Man in the Mirror, Dirty Diana, um, Speed Demon. Um, I never liked The Girl Is Mine. Okay. I never liked those, the cheesy ones, like Liberian Girl. Like the one where he's like, Liberian Girl. Yeah, I like the more um, when he digs in. I like it when he digs in. Like mm. Dirty Diana is one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs. It's, and the guitar is fucking wicked in that tune. Yeah, I still, I still really like those songs. And you were very young, you yeah. say between the ages of three and 10 yeah. when, when that happened. Yeah. Was there already a, a certain appeal of music instilled in you? Did, did, did yeah, you know you Yeah, wanted? I mean, I, I, I don't remember, uh, but my mum used to say when, when this programme came on, it's a really lame programme, it's not a music programme, EastEnders it's called, sure. and I used to just dance to the theme tune. And then I, all I remember is just tr dancing to my, like, m trying to dance like Michael Jackson for years. And I got like the white suit and okay. the hat and the hat and that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I used to just sing along to Michael Jackson. I didn't really think, oh, I want to be a singer. Okay. I used to just sing along for fun. And then I remember my s sister saying, when you sing, you sound like you're speaking too much. So try and sing like you're singing a bit more. And then from that point, I started practicing my singing. And then I got a guitar. Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been, music's always been around me and I've always enjoyed mm. music when I was a kid. But it was only when I got to about nine, maybe, seven, eight, nine, that I started sort of, my mum used to get me up to sing and stuff. Okay. Yeah. But even at that point, it was like a novelty. I didn't really sure. think I was a singer. Um, but yeah, by the time I got to 13, I, got, I had my own guitar and I was, I was singing and practicing in my bedroom. And then when I was 16, I got into a school band. So by the time I was 16, I definitely knew music was what I wanted to do. At that time, did you know you had a good voice? No, no, I mean, my voice has taken a long time to develop, really. Um, my voice is like a combination of a lot of different singers that I like, like Stevie Wonder. Sure. I just tried to emulate singers that I like, really. And then through doing that, you find your own voice. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that just took, uh, took a long time. My guitar playing was sh really bad for a long time. Um, and I just kind of, I, I just learnt guitar to back my voice really. Mm. But yeah, so by the time I was 16, I kind of realised I want to do music for a living. I can do this for a living and I'd enjoy it. And if we now fast forward then uh, to the new record, uh, yeah. Higher Than Here, do you still hear some of those elements, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, can you hear that? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, you know, yeah, but it's subtle. I don't really, um, I don't try and copy. Sure. I just try and use little bits that I like, that I feel like I can relate to or fit. I like, you know, Steve, the things that I get from Stevie Wonder are, are his phrasings and mm. the way that he ad-libs, mm. you know. Um, he always makes the ad-libs a melody as well. Um, and I, yeah, I kind of try and do that really when I sing. And yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's more it's more subconscious than like purposefully okay. trying to sound like Stevie Wonder or 
it just sort of I use it. It's it's a part of my voice. Their music is a part of my voice, but but very subtly. And well, before the album, you had a, a bit of a break. Yeah. So do you notice then what you listen to in that period that it kind of uh, seeped through into the album? Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, and no. I mean, I do, I, I go through stages of either listening to music or not listening to any okay. music. Um, because I've got I've got quite a quick hit. I can f I can hear a tune quite quickly. Mm. I can recognise a melody quite quickly. And if I listen to too much stuff all the time, I just end up copying the melodies that mm. I'm hearing. So um, I kind of listen to music and let it go in, but then try not to over listen as well and just get little flavours really. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, a bit of both, a bit, a bit of kind of getting inspiration but equally leaving enough space for me to kind of come up with my own ideas as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time we spoke you, you mentioned that uh, it was a bit of a search, uh, especially in the early stages of getting the sound right and, and what yeah. you wanted to do. What was the turning point? Um, the turning point was probably You Give Me Something. Uh, that was the first song that I wrote that uh, I felt like captured soul music, but it wasn't soul. Mm -hmm. It was more pop, but it had something about it that just felt soulful. And I kind of thought, yeah, that's kind of what I need to do. I didn't want to do straight out soul because I just felt like it had been done. And I just thought if I do my own version of it, and make it more sort of, um, make it more pop then mm -hmm. people will be able to digest it more easily. Yeah, um, yeah. you give me something, wonderful world, undiscovered and the pieces don't fit. Once I had all of them, um, everything else started to sort of fall into place really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now then with a new record, with, with songs like Demons, do, do the, does a song like that give you the same feeling you had as, as, as uh, you give me something or, or wonderful? Nah, I mean it's a different thing, you know, I still, I, I get the same feeling as in I'm, I'm excited about making music mm. and new music. I'm always excited about new music, but once I've kind of done it, I kind of move on then. That's mm. The only time I get excitement from music that I've already written is when I'm playing it live, okay. which is why I love touring so much, you know, it, it, it just brings something new to the table. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I like creating as much as I do performing. The creative side is, is um, something that um, needs a lot more work for me. But once I've got it, then everything else flows after that. I, re I really like making up songs, yeah. You know, I, 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 it's something that I need to still keep practicing. But um, yeah, I, I, that's just as enjoyable for me as singing the songs. If I didn't write them, then I, I don't think I'd have the same feeling about mm -hmm. it. So do you reconnect with, with the lyrics or, or, or uh, certain elements in the song when you perform them live? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the whole point is that so that when every time you sing it, you can connect to the lyric, mm -hmm. you know. If, if, if it's not something personal, it's not something you can relate to, then you're just singing. Um, and on certain days, certain lines will pop out more than others, you know. Mm. I wrote a song for my dad, and every time I sang that, it had the same effect, you know. Or songs like Person I Should Have Been. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah I, think, I think a lot of the vibe really comes out of being in the moment, and, um, you know, writing the song is like the prep work. Mm. Once you've done the prep and you've got the song sounding good, then you know it's going to be easier to sing live yeah. yeah and on the new record then is there a song that uh, well because there's a bit of separation since it, uh, yeah. it was released so is there a song that that you have reconnected with or found new new meanings in um, I mean they're, they're all they've all got meaning they've all got meaning but I, I mean I always really enjoy singing higher than here okay. um, I always like singing stay like this I like singing demons um, Heaven to a Fool, mm. the, the, I mean, yeah, I just kind of like, I like all the songs on the album, like Easy Love, I really like Easy Love. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few, there's a few. Um, it depends how I'm feeling. I, at the time, I wanted to make music that sounded a little bit darker, mm -hmm. a darker version of what I'd been doing before. Um, and I was enjoying that element. I was enjoying the drums hitting a little bit harder and um, singing within myself but it sounded it just sounds like 
more um, relaxed mm. but aggressive at the same time. Do, yeah. you, do you notice that element now when you're performing live? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, obviously I came from pop, mm -hmm. pop soul, and I was really young, and I was singing stuff like, you make it real or you give me something. So I wanted to be able to add songs to that that would draw from the other side of music, which is a bit darker or a bit more sort of sullen, rather than, you, me, me, whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. So with those elements together, it, it creates the whole sort of package rather than just doing more of the same. I think my time's up, so thank you very much. Yeah, for your no time. worries, yeah. Thank you.